Porsche was an obsession that started when I left school. It's a bug which you get. What's driven me to the place that we're in now is a lifelong passion for building perfection. We convert early 911s or sort of mid 80s 911s. We work with the customer to find out exactly what they want and what they want to use it for. And then we'll source the donor car, which we think is appropriate. Very often it's a car from the late 80s and that's what we'll start the project with. I've always had petrol in my veins, which I think probably comes from my father originally. My passion was in design and I began to realize that if I could draw well, I could then draw designed product. And the opportunity was with Ford Motor Company. So I started in design and I, within two or three years, I was headhunted to go to Chrysler Europe in, in the Midlands and head up interior design for Chrysler Europe. Originally, when I, I left school, I went and did my apprenticeship at the Porsche main dealer. That's where my sort of um, working cycle started with the cars. I think the big inspiration came to me when I first owned my own 911. It was an old 1986 3.2 Carrera. It had been DIY restored fairly, fairly shoddily. It, did, it felt like I'd spent a lot of money on something I shouldn't have spent my money on. Stripping it back, turning it into what I always wanted, which was a 2.7 RS. And I always wanted one in Grand Prix white with the blue stripes, just like the, the little models you get when you're, a, when you're a kid. I didn't own it for very long before somebody came and offered me a silly amount of money for it. And that was the beginning of it. Well, early days when I saw what Paul was doing, I saw the, the magic that he could work. And he knew those cars inside out. My inspiration for the whole projects that we do now comes from uh, the cars from club racing series from the late 70s through to the mid 80s but now we're building it as a car which is to be enjoyed on the road so we obviously need a bit more power and we also need uh, a bit more comfort and style in it you know make it a much more enjoyable car to drive than just a converted race car. So we officially established the business as Ren Sport in 2012, and we are now in 2021, we are just doing Car 100, which is an exciting landmark for us, really. You could say there's something that's perhaps sacrilegious about taking a car and uh, backdating it or making it a replica or whatever. But Rensport has moved on because Paul had introduced a build programs that were bespoke to individual customers. And he started to introduce some technology, not massively changing the essence and simplicity of the car, but technology which improved performance and gave driver comfort. And the interesting thing for me was when, when a, a new engine is produced, it has to go into the chassis of the existing car because few new cars come out with new bodies and new engines. So you build a new engine, it goes in an old body. You build a new body and it goes around a new engine. So that process goes on and over a 20 year period, you've got a kit of parts it's like Lego. Something from 1970 will go into a 1980s car and vice versa. So this is really just showing the flexibility of and the ingenuity of Porsche. We were approached by a gentleman from Japan um, who wanted a special car building um, so that he could use it over in Tokyo. So we designated that 100th car to Japan. We were given a fairly free book on what to do. It had to be a coupe. It had to be based on a, on a late 3.2 Carrera model, the G50 model. Um, but the brief was to make the car unique but classic, to make it like an English gentleman's car. Um, so I handed it over to my dad. There you go, you can design it. I'll do all the engineering and the building of it. Paul asked me to get involved with sort of bringing to the party, if you like, a restrained 
elegance. You know, immediately we're starting to think of classy colours, uh, solid colours. I chose the colour, which was a deep maroon colour. Um, and that's just because of boyhood memories of, you know, that colour was popular at the time. The colour is a very unusual colour in that it does change. If you're inside and there's not a lot of natural light in the room, it does look more black. And it's not until you put a black car next to it that you can see that there's some red and some maroon in it. And then interiors, we're just thinking of um, using Harris Tweed. It's very unique to what we do, is to use original materials. Harris Tweed, you know, is, is, is made still on the old looms, 900 wide by hand. So the, the notion of having an original German engineered car re-engineered and rebuilt to British craftsmanship and standards is what I wanted to do. When the body shell comes back and it's painted, it's a fabulous thing to see because you've got the beginning of a new life of a car. So it's the, the beginning of its journey. Car 100 is gonna be an everyday car. We've got to make it a combination of being able to sit in traffic, but it also needs to be performing when you do actually get out onto those lovely mountain roads. We don't do anything else apart from these early 911s. So we are very efficient at it, but it is still a lot of hours, sort of 1500 hours. A lot of the time goes into the preparation of the parts before the build up. The donor car we've used for car 100 is a 1987 3.2 Carrera G50 car. It's the last of the proper 911s, which had torsion bars in them. So the engine of the original donor car, we, we keep the original crankcases because it retains the engine number, which corresponds with the chassis number, which means we can retain the original identity of the car. So the original engine is a 3.2 uh, flat six. We rebuild the engine from scratch. We upgrade the, the cylinders and the pistons to 3.4 litre on these ones. Um, it's a much higher compression than the original one, so we use forged components. We change valve seat angles, uh, we change the material for the valve springs and the valve spring retainers, and we run what's called um, an independent throttle body system, which is the, the sexy part of the engine, which is the six trumpets which are sticking up, which have got independent butterfly throttles on them, independent injectors, which are all ran through from a computer which is under the passenger seat, and it's all computer controlled. It's fully programmable so that it can be mapped. We finally balance the engine, put it all together as well. You know, the final product is 300 horsepower plus from an original design of an engine which was doing well at 230 horsepower. We also upgrade cosmetically stuff on the engine. When you open up the, the engine lid, it needs to look as good as the rest of the car does on the outside. For car 100, we've opted in for the, the tractive suspension system, a semi-active suspension system. The car will have a, a G-force monitor in the center of the car, and that monitors the roll of the car, the pitch, the squat of the car as you accelerate in, which completely transforms the drive of the car.
To, to cope with the up rate in the power, we take a lot of the weight out of the car. So we probably take 150, 200 kilos of weight out of the car, which instantly improves the brakes. So the brake calipers are made out of billet aluminium. They've got six pots in them for the more pressure instead of the old two pot calipers. So we actually sort of take a combination of what's been developed for a race car or a rally car, and we, we put that application onto the road cars. The whole build process that we go through is full of so many different components and techniques. You have to be a craftsman at so many different levels. Once all the mechanicals are all fitted to the car, we can actually start on the personalisation, the important bits that the client will see. It's been a long journey building this car, but the, it's now ready and we're finished. It's the final product of what we think is all the best bits of all the cars that we've done in the last 99 cars. It's our favourite parts have all gone into that car. Every little detail is the best bit which we think which we've taken from each one. I'm over the moon with the car. It's the right colour, it's the right combination. It's a really special car. So the, it is perfect and it's worthy of the designation Car 100. Nothing we put together in the car is there just by chance. Everything is thought about and thought about carefully. But whether it be the soundproofing, which goes under the carpet, which nobody sees, through to the bespoke door handles, that's the first part somebody touches when they come up to the car, that makes all the little bit of difference. We're given the brief to build a sports car, so the performance is very good and it's there. But it's also got to be a classic gentleman's car. So we've had to combine the both together. We think we've got the perfect combination of having the perfect gentleman's car to go to uh, an evening ball in, but it's also something that you can actually go and have some great fun in. Desire. I think that, that it's all about desire. You know, the customer already will know the product. Like Paul, they know every nut and bolt, every engine combination. But 
for the first time they see a car which is more perfect than it was when it was manufactured in a superb body finish that's probably better than it ever was when it came off the semi-mass production line and with quality of engineering which it comes with something which is hand built and anybody that's sort of going to be looking at this sort of car or buying this sort of car wants perfection and they can see the perfection and if they can see it they can feel it it started its journey now to meet its new owners and I can't wait to see it actually out in the mountains in Tokyo. Yeah. Mm -hmm.